Hello everyone and welcome back to Asian Cash and in this video we are going to be talking about how to get into the competitive play of Age of Sigma and we'll sort of be talking about this as a whole but it'll be coming from a sort of a point of view where you haven't really been playing competitively yet maybe it's just you and your mates playing a few games at your local store or at your house and you think about maybe one day you like to go to a tournament or you even booked one something like that how would you get into that sort of like more match play competitiveness especially in the um, Age Sigma Gemma's Handbook 2022 Season 1. And to join me in this video, I'm very lucky to have Alex. So Alex, how are you doing today, sir? Yeah, I'm doing good. How are you? Very, very well, thank you. It's good to be back onto YouTube and actually making content. It's lovely to have you back again, because you have done a few videos with uh, myself in the past, a few very long videos. Um, I think we did an FAQ one once upon a time, the one on four. A horrendous i think we we're all working different points in that day doing different shifts and every single one of us late how, how that happened but anyway so we're trying to have this video a bit shorter and um so we're just going to ask a series of questions as i haven't really been playing too much competitiveness lately so that's why i've got alex who's very very good competitive player that i know personally uh to answer our questions but first off just if anyone hasn't um seen any of the videos you've been on before alex or doesn't know you um tell us a bit about yourself mate so like how long have you playing age of sigma what sort of armies do you play yeah so basically i've kind of had the the story we all have of as a kid i, I played it and then discovered girls and was like yeah like we'll step away from that and then yeah first lockdown covid hit and you know I was watching netflix playing call of duty whatever and i was like oh i've still got my models i'll like, just do it painting do something different and then yeah it's just slowly snowballed uh, got really into TTS, Tabletop Simulator, it's over great, yeah. lockdown. Um, that's why I went to the competitive side. Like, even now, they're still, we're still running events, you know, 100-person events online, like, let alone during lockdown when, yeah, it was mad. Getting to, like, yeah, as a new player, getting to play against the best players in the world and getting spanked, but learning a lot. <laughs> you got your loads uh, of your reps in as well, didn't you, doing that? Exactly. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah hundreds, games hundreds games of games in. Um, what hours did you get to on TTS? Oh, like, like over, I'm over a thousand hours now. It's crazy. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's a great lockdown. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was good. Um, yeah, and then sort of came out of lockdown, and sort of I, there's a lot going on in my life, so I had a, kind of got to a few events, and then kind of at the end of the last GHB, really, really got like going with it, and yeah, got to about four or five events in the spring, and kind of still going with it now, and yeah, just yeah, really enjoy the competitive aspect of it. Um, it's, yeah, definitely where my passion lies. Fantastic. It's all that sort of strategic thinking, isn't it? And just yeah. how um, obviously you can come up with so many game plans and obviously there's a huge amount of luck in Age of Sigma as well with all sorts of these tabletop dice rolling games. But even just to say when you mentioned those TTS sort of games, those tabletop simulators, you could get so, I think, minute on the details. Like I think when we have a game and I think you had like a Namati Reaver or something, it was within 0.1 millimeters or something of an objective and stuff like that. So like, what I really, really like what you can do on TTS is it just makes it so much easier to get those competitive games in. If you're maybe struggling, like I don't know, like the people you normally play with are sort of, you know, they're at work or your timers don't match up. Honestly, it's worth joining a, a Discord such as our one or the AOS uh, Coaches one or many others um, where you can still get those sort of repetitions in. But, yeah, um, sure. Exactly. And talking about tournaments and stuff, I think we've got a tournament in. You go into that uh, one in Leeds in October time. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I've got tickets, so yeah, should be. Yeah, that that'll, that'll be fun. And like to be yeah. honest, another reason why I'm doing this is because like it'll be the first tournament I've been for a long, long time. So it's good to sort of go through all the sort of details and sort of remembering all good things to uh, be prepared for. Uh, so, what sort of armies are you playing at the moment, then, Alex? So um, I'm all on Big War, uh, which yep. is a really, really off meta um, pick at Love the moment. It. Not no one's really playing that. Um, yeah, basically, kind of start of the year, found it. Kind of had written off um in the new book kind of looked it's like oh they've lost this they've lost that but then you actually start to look and you're like oh there's like a lot here and it can deal with everything and yeah kind of took it to a few events last year got three out of three four ones at the end of the last ghb so like did yeah did really really well with it um and then yeah sort of yeah again kind of new ghb came out and a lot of things changed like my list had to change massively i was like oh i don't, don't know if i love this um but i've just moved house um so everything's up here yeah so i hadn't had an event a couple of weeks ago so, oh, i'll just throw this list together with the models i've got and kind of lucked out and had a really really good event and i was like okay so yeah this is what i'll stick with probably for this ghb just until life settles down for me again um 
played lots of other stuff though. I've got Daughters of Cain Army, got a Cities of Sigma Army. Really want to get on Sil- Sylvaneth now. Um, yeah. Just need the didn't need the time to sit down and get it all painted up. And then yeah, again TTS. The joy of TTS is you're like, oh, I don't know what army I want to play. I'll just you know download these models and away we go. Um, so yeah, competitively I've got yeah pretty wide understanding of of the game. And that's fantastic, especially for this and obviously for everyone's point of view, everyone who's watching and sort of wanting to learn how they can take their army to the next level. And on that note, we just want to say hello to Ruff, uh, Russell again because he's saying good evening, guys. So I hope you're doing well, mate. And uh, don't want to pronounce your name wrong, but uh, Vili, I think it is. Uh, hey, guys, good evening. Hope you're doing very well, mate, as well. Thank you very much for joining us. And anyone watching this, if you've got any questions, put it in the chat or in the comments down below in case we don't manage to answer your question. Um, so the next sort of question I want to talk about, so we sort of talk about, you know, where we are and our experiences. We're going back to the game as a whole. So obviously how to play, you know, competitive Age of Sigma, you could talk about that for literally hours from how the game started before there were any points to where we are now, but to focus on where we are now with the new edition of the General's Handbook that you mentioned, um, what would you say were the big changes in this General's Handbook compared to the last one? So we don't need to go like every single little bit of detail, but we know, for example, there's a um, there's a few things, like a couple of things that came up, like those um, the veterans and stuff like the galley vets, and then you've got the bounty hunters, so obviously shaping the game quite a bit now. I'll let you do the talking stuff, I'm sure you can explain it quite well uh, what sort of changes like the top sort of changes you can think of yeah it's an interesting one so it's, it's kind of like twofold so obviously the ghb changed um and that brought pretty big changes but at the same time they released the uh the latest battle scroll which is like a balance sheet that they bring out um to yeah balance the game essentially and make, make changes to factions and that leveled the game out more than anything else gw has ever done with aos oh, right. uh, it's, it's crazy like you know six months ago you were talking about oh what are the top three armies in the game and it was it was quite easy whereas now you're talking about the top eight and you're like i don't know like cool. yeah so yeah um so yeah those individual changes really helped bring the yeah bring the lowest armies up and the top armies down with a few exceptions so on um but not better not um <laughs> yeah and then so so yeah the, the ghp was an interesting one like the big the big change is the bounty hunters battalion it's too good it's yeah plus one damage against uh veterans veterans are basically battle line units that have less than five wounds and aren't mounted um yeah so now suddenly your 60 block of zombies for example which you are reliant on last edition just get absolutely melted by a uh, bounty hunters battalion and it's, yeah it's too good so like yeah there's been a, a quite a big shift in in that weirdly although the last ghb was meant to be all about monsters monsters are probably better in this THB. Oh really? Um, well, yeah, because Hunters of the Heartland doesn't exist anymore. So now Raw, you know, you're going to get yes. off. Um, so like, I never ran a more Crusher um, in Big War. I, I ran just infantry lads, and now I'm running a more Crusher. And, yeah, like way, way better this this time round. Um, so yeah, like the GHB, like it's not like they, they kind of missed the mark with this GHB. Like the last GHB was really, really fun. I, the spell was impactful to like turn a hero into a monster. The command ability to have a monster fight at top bracket was impactful. Like, um, like the burning an objective on turn three was really impactful. With this one, like the command ability, you're never going to use the spell. You're really, really going to use like yeah, like the actual rules. Like they, they kind of missed the mark with. Like they've they've made the grand strategies and the battle tactics are a little bit more difficult to achieve which is nice like it, it encourages better play like you don't have you've got one auto get basically um but other than that you you've got to work for them whereas in the previous GHB you had about maybe three or four auto gets just easy ones um, yeah yeah exactly um so yeah i think mostly it's actually as i say like the it's the bounty hunters of battalion and kind of what's come with that and with veterans and then yeah the um the balance sheet which is yeah really changed the game massively in the last few couple of months yeah but it shows that obviously it's not so much about just when the general's habits coming out obviously these balance sheets is that something that's going to come out every year now of games workshop every announced? three months oh every three months all oh, right so yeah. so i remember the days of um i don't know if it was the year 2020 maybe 2021 where there was very disappointment um winter faq or something where it made it look oh that enough. video we did yeah that, that oh good. that was great i still <laughs> get angry comments about that video now mm. but but it shows just how much I, I mean not my channel but obviously when some of the bigger channels and stuff complained about you know maybe not get it i think the honest war gamer gave his peace of mind about no winter faq and now they seem to be doing 
more it's updates. A, so it's a, new de- it's a new design team, basically, um, who actually seem to be doing their job well. That's that's good. That's yeah. you know takes takes a bit of time, but eventually they do it. Um, mm. So yeah, it's interesting to see that. And when you were saying about um, bounty hunters being too strong, do you think any of this sort of comes down to maybe sort of going a step back here? But when battalions used to be um your army either had great battalions and you're doing fantastically or didn't have good battalions but you had to pay points for the battalions you know now for example bounty hunters it's very loose what can fit in the into bounty hunters generally and there's no real cost for the battalion do you think maybe that's why it's just like such an auto including your army it's one of the reasons it's so strong yeah i mean it's like if you take a one damage unit and that battalion makes that unit twice as good like it just like twice the damage output, which is like it's crazy. Like, um, so in my old big war in previous GHB, I ran 25 hard boys, and our boys have an ability where on a four up they get to rally on a four up, which is super, super strong. You know, mm-hmm. you leave my one one hard boy alive on his own, and over two turns, I've pretty much got the unit back. Now, like, it's just a liability, you know, one buffed up bounty hunter unit is just going to delete them in an instant. Um, so you just don't, you're not seeing those big bricks. Like this, the whole thing with this GHB was meant to be this, um, like encouraging you to run like infantry and it was meant to be like an infantry meta. Mm. And like, they've got this, the expert conquest battalion, which is good. It's count each model counts as three on an objective. Like that's a really good, like, it's an objective based game. That's really, really good ability. And like you can, I, I still use that battalion, but I use it like for MSU, um, our boys. But yeah, when bounty hunters exists, like you just can't do it um yeah you can't and risk it no you just everything gets deleted other than like a very select few units like phoenix guard and uh blight kings and things like that there's a couple that you can do it with you, you can probably count on one hand how yeah many exactly units. yeah do you think it's yeah so it's obviously they've tried to go the infantry way and it turns out instead of making an infantry meta they've made a very anti-infantry meta so the bounty hunters massively would you say on average outweighs the um gun events yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, if you don't have to run, um, like, yeah, veterans, you don't. Like, you, obviously, there's like a lot of conditional battle line in the game, so you're seeing you, like quite a lot of people deliberately take, making their infantry. Like, like for example, Nighthorn uh, hex wraiths can be battle line. They're mounted, so they're not veterans. And then you're seeing them take blade guys revenants and stuff like that as non battle line units, just so they aren't, you know, on the slap back, going to get absolutely wrecked. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I, me- I remember back in the day where it would be a case of. Do you want to make a, a unit battle line? There's no real benefit. Maybe there's some battle plans that give you an extra victory point if it's battle line. So you think you mm-hmm. might as well make it. But now it's very much when you are ticking your boxes on your war scroll builder or however you are making your army list, uh, try not to make things automatically just fall into the battle line. Yeah, like, um, I think having trick. having some veterans is good. So um one of the the rules with the new GHB is basically you can if you're going second, you can make an objective only be scored by veterans. So means if you don't have any your opponent can just switch off scoring on a particular objective for you yep. um and then and vice versa you can do that to them so having a couple of units that you don't really care about of veterans that you can hold back and then just chuck onto objectives when you want to is a good thing but yeah massed infantry is not the way to go now no it, like you're saying it can make things like um units of 10 now become count as you know like a, a 30 man not a unit mm-hmm. for an objective taken, but you're not going. You're not investing too much into it because only like a unit of ten. Yeah, I don't know, ha- a chain rasp or, or something like that. It has to be a unit that would die either way. So like the, yeah. probably the best veteran unit in the game right now are true Re- true revenants in Sylvaneth. They're ten wounds, five up save, um, but they teleport every turn. So you can have them teleporting around, jumping on objectives. If they're an expert conquerors, the counting is fifteen. But if you put them out of position and they get charged. Either way, they're dead. Like it doesn't really matter. Like if you know it's by a bounty hunter unit or by another one, they're dead. Um, yeah. So like units like that have definitely got play. Uh, it's just anything that you you know a classic anvil unit. Um, it can't be a veteran unit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's it's all that sort of um, countering. You want your opponent basically to massively overkill your unit of five models, for example, mm-hmm. rather than because the amount of damage output they could do is insane. I mean, like I was having a look at, I think, um, so I used to always love running those Varangard models from Space of Darkness. And I remember like on the charge in certain ways, you can make them damage two with, you know, six attacks each, but obviously um, with this through Bounty Hunters, I think you can now make them three damage and all. And that, that's just one unit, isn't it, as a it's, comparison? It's very, it's very easy to make a unit of 
30 witch elves do 100 over I know over 150 damage. And that's just what the game is. <laughs> yeah. It's just like what? It's, yeah, it's it's nuts. It's like um well I've been talking about it for a while now, but like when they came up with the Gallivet idea to try and make an inventory heavy meta, it's like um they thought, oh, do you want to be a nice cherry on the top to make a small way for some people to try and combat some of the inventory, but they obviously just Yeah. Massive... It's just it was bad design. Like all they had to do was make bounty hunters only um veterans. And then you're like, yeah. oh cool. Well now we, I've either got my veterans who are fighty or I've got my veterans who are scoring objectives. And it's like cool, now we now we're talking. Um, but yeah, just being able to have any unit that, yeah, is a troop type. So basically not a behemoth or a leader, um, being in veterans is like, oh, yeah. yeah. And, and I think like not saying rules aren't better than this one, but just reading a rule that says plus one damage, is just lovely. You know, like yeah. we, we can all get any unit can benefit from that hugely. Um, so just go back to Russell in the chat. He's saying that don't dig out my, um, Seraphon. So Seraphon, I've been angry out for years. They don't play by the rules, but. They're very happy to stick to what they know. Um, and then we've got um, Donny saying, blessed be my friend. So I hope you're doing very well, mate. Um, thank you for joining. And then, right, so there are sort of main changes we were talking about going from the last Jones Handbook to this one and the changes. Yeah, so just, just, just one extra yep. that's worth talking about is previous GHB, you had a lot of um, battle tactics, which came down to like scoring objectives. So you had... Uh, aggressive expansion, which was hold two. You had conquer, which was taking an objective off another um, off your opponent. They now battle tactics are much more about killing your opponent. So uh, armies like Legion of the First Prince in the last uh, GHB did a melee because they just sat on two objectives. They controlled yeah. the board, they scored tactics, and they ground out games. That build doesn't do so well now because you've got to have a way to kill stuff. Um, so we've gone into a much more like aggressive, killy kind of meta. Um, than previously yeah the only other thing worth noting yeah no that that's very true that's a good point and like some armies shifting as well like i imagine like if i could just what is the well, the next question i was going to ask you anyways what are the armies that are doing good at the moment um and the reason why i just mentioned that quickly is to say that i imagine the um the giants aren't doing particularly well at the moment are they you know like for example in the last edition how it was very monster heavy in this mm -hmm. edition are they would you say they're suffering a bit um people just aren't really running giants anymore that's the problem like they're fine oh, really like, people just got bored of them like they're, they're, they're quite a one-dimensional army so yeah people have kind of moved on from them um as i said like it's kind of a catch-22 you don't have these you used to have battle tactics where you got bonuses for the you know doing them with monsters but you also got points for killing monsters um yes. whereas now it's kind of that's kind of evened itself out and obviously as i said like no more hunters uh in the heart of battalion somewhere means raw works every time um so giants are probably fine just the problem is is the meta shifted around them to that more damage heavy meta so you know iron jaws seraphon yeah. stormcast daughters of cain like just rip through them um because yeah 35 wounds on a four up like that's, that's easy for a lot of armies now yeah it doesn't even sound that hard is it so um yeah. what do you say are the armies that are doing particularly well at the moment now i know you just said that you know a year or so ago, you could pick, you know, the top three armies, and now it's a bit harder. But is there any armies that I know you've just quickly mentioned there? You know, um, Seraphon, Daughters of Cain, etc. Um, but are there any uh, any armies that particularly stand out to you that you would say are sort of poging at tournaments at the moment, or is it all lovely mixed? Be the best so we've, we've only got a month of events so far. Uh, very weirdly, uh, KO have been the best performing faction so far, um, yep. and that's potentially. I mean, Purple Sun is a big thing. Chuck that in a bottle, chuck it on your opponent. And then your whole army is plus one rend um, for that first turn alpha. Uh, and again, those killy battle tactics. But yeah, it's like, I think Seraphon and Nurgle are still the best armies in the game. But again, people are kind of tired of them. Like they're not they're not seeing that representation in the meta. But if you take like a full, a full strength Seraphon list, if you run all flies in Nurgle, like with a good player, you're going 5-0. Like most, like, you know, but definitely 4-1 probably 5-0 but yeah people yeah people are trying other stuff and as i said like that the, yeah the balance sheet has meant that you know these armies which weren't seeing play are now suddenly like oh this, this is like real play and yeah it's shaking everything up so people are wanting to try different and fun things um so yeah I, I, there's not any standouts like if you put the time in with your army and understand your win condition you could you can go 3-2 with anything you, if you put the time in you can go 4-1 with 
probably any army right now. That is the best possible answer you could have given me on that because that, that's that's such a nice answer, isn't it? Of like trying to get to as close to a, you know like a balanced slate mm -hmm. as, and it's not just oh, it's so good. Yeah, like I mean, I know like Beast of Chaos are, have been doing quite well at the moment, for an example, yep. and. I think in that long Beast of Chaos series, I did every single episode. I had to start by saying it's not the most competitive army, so don't tell me that in the comments. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, I'm, but if you want to play it anyway, here you go, sort of thing. Who but, knew that plus two rend was really, really good? Yeah, who would have thought? Who would have thought? So, yeah, so that that's that's absolutely lovely to hear. Um, I'd say, yeah, I'd say probably the two, rather than armies, it's actually War Scrolls. The two most competitive oh, okay, War yeah. Scrolls yeah, that's a good idea, are, the, yeah. are the Incarnate and the Purple Sun. And we'll, we'll chuck Cogs in. Um, so, like, yeah, the incarnate is crazy. It's just an unkillable yeah. monster. Uh, in certain armies like Beasts of Chaos, its its abilities are amplified um, due to the fact that it's a way for the army to survive until turn three because you've got this monster, that, this big scary piece that's not dying, and then by turn three, all your armies on Ren three, Ren four, Ren five, and you go and blitz everything. Um, but yeah, it's it's four hundred points of pretty killy monster with some good good buffs. That's great. Um, possibly entering like a quite like a back into like a magic dominant meta um i'm sure you remember aos2 when yeah fangs of sotek and teclas yeah. and so zinch archaeon and all of that stuff was around and it was just like if you yeah either you had to really lean into that game or you just accept that you couldn't um potentially we're getting back there and the spells are very very good a select few um cogs quite cheap giving, as well yeah cogs giving named Wizards rerolls, so Nagash, Crow, yeah. uh, rerolls is bonkers good. Purple Sun is just horrible for the game and needs to get in the sea. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just needs to go. Um, and then we've got we know the next two books are Lumineth and Zinch, uh, who are both you know probably the two most uh, uh, along with Seraphon, probably the two most magic dominant um, armies in the game. So you probably need an answer to magic. Even it's just taking Master of Magic command trait just to have something to get your purple sun off the board or whatever else is, yeah, it's definitely worth considering. Yeah, that, that you know, it's some armies, don't they? I know, like, for example, probably quite a niche thing, but um, Osrite Bone Reapers, one of the sub allow allowed them to ignore things like spells and under spells and five ups. There might be artifacts that allow you to ignore on a four up or something like that where you maybe didn't really look at it too much before, but now maybe you'll consider taking many anti spell things because some armies don't really have many do they like some armies have them and some armies don't yeah exactly like um as i said about um my army, next night i mean probably be silver Neth. like they've got a command trait which is a four up magic protection holder within 12 of their general at the oh, moment there's a couple of other really good command traits where you're like oh like, i could go this i could go this but it's on a knife edge and yeah as i said if, if lumineth and zinch do what you know they're probably lined up to do then yeah you're just gonna be like yeah that one Exactly. And is this like the, is it the third Lumineth book coming out or is it the... the it is the third. One? Yeah. Third one, yeah. Yeah, it, it's, it's needed. Like, yeah, yeah, it's a weird one, isn't it? It is so, a weird one. They just having one new model come out. I imagine they would have... I think they're getting a whole new... I think they're getting their water temple. Don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty, pretty sure that that's going to be happening. That's cool. I mean, to be fair, like I know there's like the two sides of the coin going on. Not another book I have to buy, but at the same time, I do think it's always quite nice when a new shiny book comes up for your army. Um, yes, so that that's that's a fantastic answer, and I think you know a good way to adapt it. Saying talking about the war scrolls as well, they're particularly good. And those war scrolls um, are available for every army, like the three you mentioned there, aren't they? So absolutely, that makes it every army not more on a sort of level playing field again. Um, so just want to quickly read out the chat. So we've got Arnold saying, um, again, congrats for coming uncle. So basically I became an uncle last week. So thank you very much, Arnold. Very nice to you. Um, and definitely securing the place of favorite uncle at the moment. So that's the main thing. And Russell was saying that the more scenarios are now deploying 18 inches apart with objectives in um, the middle. So combat armies are coming back strong as it's a lot more smash in the middle at the moment. What would you say about that, Alex? Do you think that's quite true? Because like you're saying, a lot of the battle tactics are about killing your opponent as well, aren't they? Yeah, so shoot, basically, I mean, for the whole, like since AOS 3.0, when we've got a smaller table, shooting armies, uh, their, their strength have reduced. Um, and yeah, um, combat armies are definitely in the ascendancy at the moment, with a couple of exceptions. KO doing really well, Seraphon being Seraphon. Um, but yeah, a good combat army, 
um, and yeah, in this game is yeah no longer hampered uh, like it used to be um, in yeah the last version of AOS, which is great. That, that's really really good. And like I said, I thank God that um, Shooting isn't in Bounty Hunters as well because that would be horrendous. I imagine. Um, yeah. Bloody sentence. And then you've got uh, Russell Gen saying that Beast of Chaos uh, best ar army currently. So um, it sounds like every army can be very good, but I'm really happy to see that Beast of Chaos are doing particularly well. Um, they like even if. I know they're not, but they say they were massively broken at the moment, as broken as the Purple Sun or something. I think an army like that, they deserve it. You know, they've had such a bad time since, I think, fantasy that, you know, let's give them some spell. And then we've got uh, Gwell, who's donated uh, two dice. Thank you very much, uh, Gwell. That's really, really helpful for the channel. You're a superstar. And it goes incarnate for life. Uh, bring spells just to feed it. So, again, like you were saying about the heavy like, spell meta and how cheap and the spells are at the moment. Um, and then we've got um answer so saying that thoughts on slaves darkness kabulis and purple sun so i know that you did do quite a few kabulis lists and you a few yeah. i don't know if you've touched them since last time i spoke to you about it but you did play for them for a little while didn't yeah you? I, I ran them for a bit last ghb and did pretty well with them until they nerfed cogs and then i was like oh there we go no no more plus <laughs> one, no, no more plus yeah plus one cast for my entire army um yeah, like it's interesting. Uh, I think Kabbalis has a lot of interesting stuff. Um, another another call out is they've got quite a few ways to reduce movement and then gnashing jaws um, will just, if you cast that into them, will do like, yeah, you know, 10, 15 mortal wounds potentially um, to a unit like that. So that's a fun little thing. But yeah, double moving purple sun. It, it's a meme. Like it's, yeah, it's funny. Like when it comes off, it'll be hilarious. But um, yeah, like, competitively yeah yeah exactly what i'd say also about kabulis is that um bear in mind that slaves darkness are getting an update i think it's about november time yeah um so no nothing wrong with playing kabulis at the moment but just like you know um make hay when the sun shines on that one i'm probably going to start playing quite a bit of slaves darkness i might take to that tournament it's just one last hurrah in my limited edition battle time that i know become worthless as soon as that new book comes out <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> um and then we've got uh Guo again saying um, I've have um, also found that the scenarios have nerfed shooting armies to um, extent. Uh, just shooting across the board just isn't cutting it anymore. And I know you were mentioning shooting earlier as well, Alex, weren't you? Which is, I think, shooting is definitely something that they need to keep a balance as much as they can yeah. on because it can. It, it's very much like a pendulum, isn't it? They can make shooting so it's hardly worth taking, and then they can make it so it is too powerful. And a lot of the time, it ends up being in the too powerful category. I, I find anyway, rather than being it's pathetic and never worth taking. Um, so, yeah, like you, sorry, you've, still got, you've still got very powerful shooting armies. Um, like Namati Reaver Spam is probably the best IDK build at the moment. Um, and shooting is good for the game. Like we've got really, really powerful um, support heroes. You know, like for example, Chaos Lord with Archaeon. Like if you can't get to him, you're like, what do I do? Or War Chanters or um all these other little you know um like sloppy bio piper like if you don't have shooting going into into nurgle and you can't pile in it's a, it's a horrendous game so a bit of shooting is good um and yeah like old like old um so old core rules so aos2 most battle plans were 24 inches apart so you knew like if you had long range shooting you had like basically two turns of shooting before your opponent could get to you now most things being 18 as mentioned your opponent can hit you in yeah first turn so like you, the shooting output isn't so great that you can clear everything off in that next turn before your screens die and your 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 um, shooting dies. Um, so like that's where the balance has come in smaller board size, thankfully. Um, yeah. So yeah, I think it's good for the game, but it just needs to be yeah controlled. And I think um, I don't. This is very specific, and it's because I've been reading quite a bit into Night Hunt lately. But I thought the idea of Having to, well, well, I was thinking about creating Night Haunt lists, and I was like, yeah, definitely going to take the, is it the Grieving Legion, which means that the opponent can't retreat from you if you've got tenable models? And I was mm -hmm. thinking, like, I don't know how much of a fun experience this is going to provide for my opponent. So I thought, if I was going to, if I took Slay's Darkness, it's like, maybe it's worth bringing in something that can pepper some shooting to try, if you were to go against Night Haunt, that might become quite a popular army because they can be painted yeah. up very quickly. Maybe yeah, it takes yeah. something that can do a guaranteed couple of damage a turn, just to turn a unit of 10 into a unit of eight before they can resurrect more. But I, I don't know. I just thought that could be another another angle to uh, to do it upon. Um, 
Right, and then we've got, just as we are going for the questions, uh, Russ saying, what tournament are you going to? So I'm going to Trump of the Mill, I believe it's called, um, in Leeds. And I think it is around the first weekend in October. Mm -hmm. um, so that will be a great experience to start playing some games again. I hope I get a couple in before that particular date. Um, but my idea would just be taking an army that I already know. Um, and then, well, again, it's donated a couple more dollars. That's really, really kind of you, mate. I do like massively appreciate it, especially if I haven't been making a lot of videos lately, so that's really, really nice to see. Um, just want to say, last thing to say, please nerf the Purple Sun at GW. Yeah, I, I think we're we're all in agreement here. It's one of those weird things that we all have access to the Purple Sun, so it's not like everyone's just hating on one army. It's just that, so if we all have access to it and we all kind of agree it should be nerfed, then it's the perfect answer. Um, and then Gwell's also saying, I'm torn on shooting as nerfing it too much will destroy certain armies that rely on it. And I think um, what you said there, Alex, about the idea that it's still good. It's just trying to keep it within somewhat into a, a box of giving it a more sort of specific role. Um, and I think, like, for example, if I think about an army that does very, very much rely on shooting, like a KO, they're still, like I think you were saying earlier, they're still doing particularly well. Yeah, they they were, did really badly last year. HB like one of the I think they had about a forty percent win rate and, and it's early days. But yeah, this first month of the new GHB, they've had three five O's. Um, oh, well. but yeah, we're doing really well. So uh, there you go as an example. Um, some of our armies that you know can rely heavily on shooting us, like Stormcast, but obviously have access to many other ways to do damage, etc. Um, so fantastic! Thank you very much for all your questions, guys. Um, so going on to the next thing I wanted to talk about. And I well, I say so we basically written a, a list of questions to ask each other um going into this, and we're kind of our answer as we go along. So I was gonna say, what's the meta? And we have kind of already talked about the meta, obviously, as a whole already. Um, but it was one that, along the lines of if you're if you're picking up the general's handbook and go, Oh, actually, heavy infantry looks like that's what they want to get out of this. It's not quite so because of how strong things like bounty hunters are. Would you say um, across the board, Alex, there's a common theme you can see in what people are taking in armies that could be called the meta as a very rough way to use that word? You need to be able to kill stuff. Um, yeah. Like, yeah, like you, before you, like control armies did well, like you need a way to be like, right, that, that unit, that's dead. Like that's my battle tactic, it's dead um so yeah we're definitely like yeah we're in a meta of hammers rather than anvils like yeah there's, there's not many anvils in the game that i would see and be like oh i'm a bit worried about going into that like save stacking there's a there's a few units around i'm still like okay i'm never killing that like okay on yeah. while in his, in his current form on threes re-rolling ones with five different ways to get plus one to save um i'm like okay he's not dying this game like we kill everything else but they're quite few and far between. Um, so yeah, like uh, you need a way to kill stuff. You need a way to deal with minus one damage. There's quite a lot of that. Of way, like Bounty Hunters does that to an extent, which is why it's popular. Um, you need a way to deal with magic. You need ideally a plan for if you when you come up against incarnates because they're everywhere. Yeah. Um, but yeah, primarily it's yeah output is what you need uh, and screens because your opponent is also going to have ways to kill you and if you don't if you can't protect what you care about then it's going to be a very quick game yeah i agreed and from what i'm hearing as well it definitely sounds like what it is and then russell's again just saying incarnate because obviously what you've been saying is very good and mobility um is huge in the moment mobility has always been a big thing hasn't it oh um, the, the game is won and lost in the movement phase um or deployment and then movement phase like yeah that's never going to change Nah, and then just everything that dies in the middle is about 50% of what makes the game. Um, so, yeah, I, th I think that's probably cool. And so you could talk about the meta for hours and hours and hours, and you can go to every single army, but as a sort of a whole, I think we've done a good job there. Um, and then, so the next question I was going to ask is uh, best ways to build an army in terms of Ganyvets, um, something you want to take lots of or try to avoid. It's sounding like the best way to do it is don't invest a large amount of your army in Gaddy Vets. It's just if you've got units of five models that fit that um, the requirements or units of 10 models, you know, basically the minimum size units, you might as well put them in there, maybe just to get you a few more numbers and objectives, but there's not a really huge emphasis of turning most of your army into Gaddy Vets. Yeah, like maybe, you know, a, a better mind than me could, yeah, come up with some interesting plays because 
also not every especially if galley vets are rarely seen um then the need to take bounty hunters is going to reduce and people go back to doing one drops and all of that stuff at which point veterans and expert conquerors and stuff like that are really really good because they take the hit and you just can't push them on off objectives so it all depends on yeah you know it's the, the meta is always shifting like there's always new ideas new books all of this um but yeah for me at the moment i take three uh minimum size units of of veterans in my big war in my sylvan f i take two units of tree revenants and yeah it's that kind of thing it's you know two two or three units chuck them in expert conquerors um and yeah they'll be they'll be be annoying they've got to be dealt with because yeah they're sat on that objective that you can't take and then i can like draw out their bounty hunters and which is normally like one of their good units uh and then on the counter punch i get to lift a lot more of their army than they do of mine but yeah as i've said like yeah running your 30 blocks of yeah infantry or you know even more than that is just like not right now wait si wait six months wait till the next mm. ghb and yeah you'll, you'll be you yeah you'll be back on the money if you if you've got things in your army that can maybe make the enemy minus one damage like i know the night horn i think it's the spirit torn Cru no, cruciator torn. cruciator that's the one can do things like that where like some armies might have ways to get around the damage because imagine a lot of the bounty hunters are things that just normally do one damage but maybe a lot of attacks and now it's two damage for bounty hunters so maybe there's a couple of exceptions but i think you've got the uh you hit the nail on the head there and saying like how and, and when you would use it and again i know the general's handbook has been out now for a couple of months the new one or well, about um probably about five weeks something like that yeah like yeah about yeah i think it was middle to end of june yeah it's still fairly early days. I know they might be bringing out two general's handbooks a year now, but they're still like, you know, whatever we're saying now in a month's time or six weeks' time, there could be a whole load more of different opinions and stuff on what's going mm. on. Um, and then the other thing I was going to say, talking about battalions, what was the battalion uh, that can make your army essentially a one-drop army? What was the name of? Battle Regiment. The Battle Regiment. Is that still popular or are people heavily aiming more towards bounty hunters? Are they doing... Uh, battle regiment and bounty hunters yeah so i'm off to carnage next weekend um big oh, event up here in manchester and alex kind of posted up a list of uh, like, of all the drops uh and three i think it's three drop is the most common which is two bounty hunters and a battle regiment basically um well like two units within bounty hunters mm. i should say uh and a battle regiment but then it was two and one drop after that uh and then it was four five six and down like that so it's kind of a bit of a rock, paper, scissors thing. Like if you go one drop and then you come up against, you know, loads of veterans and that kind of thing, then you're at a disadvantage. Um, but if you come up against, you know, a three drop list, which is just bounty hunters and a, and a battle regiment, and you're both kind of relying on, you know, getting priority, then you've got a really big advantage. So it, it's it, like, it's the one good thing about bounty hunters is it's given people a reason not to take battle regiment um so it's given a bit more diversity uh in that sense um so you're still yeah like three four drops like you there's still a very good chance that you're not going to get to choose priority like there's still loads of one drops out there yeah exactly so it's good to see that is still an option that you can take because obviously having the choice of being able to go first or second is, is overrated huge overrated yeah. I'm reckon? The, I'm the, I, yeah i'm the third highest drops at the event and i couldn't be happier about it really it's one less it's one less decision i don't have to decide who goes first or last i just react once one once less one <laughs> yeah and, and so, is that because you've also came up in your head like depending on the scenario in the army you're fighting you know what to do if you've gone first or you've gone second yeah yeah exactly. it, comes, it, comes, it comes it comes down to list building like i've got an answer i've got an answer if i go first i've got an answer if i go second um you've got yeah it's it's a harder game like i'm not like i i'm making my life a little bit more difficult um just as i'm making my life more difficult not running purple sun or not running an incarnate but yeah there's a few things in the game i'm just like don't enjoy like it'd be a bit different and yeah that's one of them is going super low drop yeah like if you can you know like i was about to say you know being able to choose who goes first is such a big thing if you can win your games without being able to make that choice you know it shows even the step further doesn't it about your generalship over your army um and then just what we're talking about galley vets and stuff we just got russell again saying uh, mcgreed he's dumped his skinks Soros knights now so they aren't galley vets so that's essentially things you might be looking to do in your army to try and avoid them best you can um like you're saying with um hex race and night haunt and then 
Uh, the last question I was going to ask, uh, what are your thoughts on the sort of um, the battle pack we've got now, uh, the grand strategies, battle tactics? We already talked about grand strategies and battle tactics, but in terms of battle plans, have you got a summary of what you're sort of, you think of the new edition? Has it really made that many changes, the new battle plans? Are they shaking things up or not particularly? It, it, they're really hit and miss. So they are, they are all very, they are very different. Um, and it probably depends on your TO. So there's a few battle plans which might in my opinion just shouldn't be exist competitively uh one of them um is just switches off teleporting so you can just mm -hmm. and look for certain oh, armies right. um so like silver or... um yeah like all these ones like you just like right well i've lost like cool uh, <laughs> yeah, you know struggle. you know like but it's like oh well my yeah, yeah no my entire allegiance ability is based around this thing and now i can't do it um there's another one where you score an extra two vp if you kill a um, veteran unit and it's and it's three vp if you do so while they're on an objective which is wild like yep. say i've got three veteran units and my opponent doesn't have any mm. that's a six point swing and like my veteran units are screens like it's their job they're there to die like they're not there to sit in the back and be protected by my expensive killy heroes and stuff like that um so yeah those two yeah have no have no place competitively in my opinion um but if that's if the, that's your opinion and maybe the opinion of the competitive yeah, mindset of people yeah maybe it's a lot of down. yeah uh, um but yeah like other than like they're, they're they're definitely more interesting like they're getting a bit more creative and they brought back some nice ones from like uh aos2 like forcing the hand where you had to like pick oh, out, yeah. like a, yeah like they've kind of brought that back and that thing um so yeah like th yeah they're, they're good it's still a lot of fighting in the middle it's but they've not reinvented the wheel um they've just taken ideas and yeah changed them and given them a new name and a bit of a spruce up which i think is great right because i think you know in my opinion anyway if the wheel's not broken it doesn't necessarily need to be fixed you don't need to make changes for the sake of making changes um mm -hmm. so it sounds like they made a few nice tweaks here and there um and then uh, what I was going to say also is a, a question you suggested as well is that saying about what are sort of good steps you can take into if you wanted to get into the competitive and tournament scene so what do you think if someone um has been playing a few games with their mates stuff like that and go, you know what I want to take it to the next sort of level in my um grand strategy of how I can work my armies and everything else what would you say is a few tips for them just do it <laughs> like yeah. um like it, it, like it is an understandably you know concerning thing You're like oh i'm gonna go against like all these like really good players and they're gonna thrash me and <laughs> like but like the way that the the tournament system works is first round you might get unlucky and you might get placed against a really really good player and you might get your ass handed to you but you'll learn a lot and then from there you're going to be playing against people who have the same result as you so yeah as a first event like you obviously you play to a time limit so depending on the to it's anywhere between two and a half and three hours um so like know your rules like that's that's the primary thing like from my point of view if i was playing a newer player i'd be super happy to like do that and like we could almost do like a learning game and but knowing your rules just speeds everything up rather than you have every second be like oh sorry i need to check this rule i need to check this rule yeah. like, if you can get off book or at least have a cheat sheet as much as possible then that's going to make the whole thing easier and then yeah like it's we we like there aren't that many like you know hyper hyper competitive and there's there's none really in the AS community like we're all there you know to see each other like, have a good time like drink a few beers like have good games of warhammer um and so yeah like just do it and you'll have the best time exactly like you said about cheat sheet as well like aos reminders particularly if you want to get into that sort of tournament scene because like or like say even just write a, a cheat sheet where you go right start the hero phase what do i need to do this rather than sort of getting halfway through the the movement phase and go oh sorry there was something else made at the start of the movement phase and because it's like a tournament you can't really go back and just to avoid that sort of unpleasant awkwardness um or those sort of forgetful rules and i think you're absolutely right when you say like it's i mean i've been to not particularly recently although like I said, i'm going to one in october i haven't been to a tournament for a couple of years um since covid but before that i've probably been to about six or seven um in-person ones and i suppose i did the ones online as well so I've probably been to about 10 tournaments and i 10 tournaments it's probably about uh 50 games and then a couple of them six so probably about between 50 and 55 games and maybe one of them 
or two of them I didn't particularly get on with my opponent and they weren't a particularly bad person. They just, they took something I didn't, I basically got thrashed and I didn't like it. Um, but uh, like compared to these horror things you hear, go, I don't want to go to the toilet because everyone takes it too seriously. It's not about fun. Blah, 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 blah. It's absolute bollocks in, in my uh, opinion and experience as well. And when you play against these people who are very good, something that I did as well when I was getting into tournaments, I just said to them, because you're, you're there chatting for about 15 minutes, packing away your armies together or something. And if you do lose your game against them, um, or even if you sort of, it was a close one, ask them um, if they were you, would they play your army differently? Or what would, What do you think I should have done in my last turn? Do you think I should have gone for that or I should have gone for this? And they'll probably give you um, their two piece and their thoughts on it, or probably a different perspective that you've got yourself. And you go, oh, never really thought about using that unit that way. But yeah, that's quite a good idea. Yeah, for sure. Um, and like, like a really nice story like at my last event, um, one of the guys was running Sylvaneth and he was playing a, a newer player who was running Ideneth and basically they deployed and the, the, the Sylvaneth just, they'd won on deployment, right? And his opponent knew it and he was like, I've lost, haven't I? And he was like, yeah, kind of. He's like, oh, well, like, I'm wanting to get into Sylvaneth. Could you show me what your army does? And I'd love to do like, have this as a learning game. And this is like game three of like an event. And it's, it's like, absolutely. And so they just had like, a really nice game where he just showed them all the tricks that someone had had and explained everything he was doing. And the guy went away having had like an amazing time and a much better idea of what, how his next army would play. And yeah, like it's, there's always going to be yeah cases like that. And yeah, you, you know, it's very easy when you lose a game to be like, Oh, my dice, my dice, my dice. So it's like, yeah, mm, like just like ask, like, what could I have done differently if you get thrashed and, generally your opponent will know because the whole thing with aos is you take advantage of people's mistakes um yeah. and th then you actually learn something rather than just going away pissed off it's like oh if i'd rolled a nine on this charge if i won this priority yeah, yeah if i'd won yeah this, yeah if, if i yeah if i'd won this double turn that, yeah um About so, to... and yeah, I think, exactly. i think that's very very true and i think also like even though they just give you specific advice for eco like because like um i think I mean, this was from the early days of HC, but I played an army, which was a corn blood letter army, and it was called a murder host back then. It had something like 120 blood letters in it. They'd be in your face turn one, and it was very hard to try and deal with it. But essentially, when I played against this guy, I think my point of view was along the lines of, I can't possibly win this. That was that was my point of view. And although the favor, the, the chance of me winning was very much not in my favor, um, I said to him, like, at the end of the game, I was like, what would you have done if you and me, if I was facing this again? And then he broke down the weaknesses of his army. And like, you know, like you were saying about the Sylvaneth story, like if that guy lost in deployment and then he could ask that guy, um, any tips for fighting against Sylvaneth in case they come against them later? And then he could give his heart out of all the advice he could give him about how to fight against Sylvaneth. And then that guy's next game might be against Sylvaneth. And then he's just learned straight away rather than just going, being annoyed and not asking any questions. Straight away, he could benefit from it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so j just talk to your opponent Ag again. You know, we all play. The reason one of the reasons we play this game rather than just sitting and playing Call of Duty all day and stuff is because you get that social element and just you know talk to your opponent. Essentially, They're all a lot of people have travelled generally quite far to go to a tournament, particularly not to have a bad time with their opponents. So it's in everyone's interest to enjoy themselves. Um, but yeah, and then just to go through the chats, a few people have asked some questions. And just to say, we'll probably be finishing the video within about five minutes. So if anyone's got some more questions, put it in now, or if we miss it, put it in the comments down below and I'll answer it best I can. Um, so Colt is saying, Agent of Cash, does it feel like they're putting AOS on the back foot at the moment with almost no announcements and no hype building of any kind, especially to 40K and 30K right now? What I would say personally is my point of view might be a bit different as because... I think I mentioned at the start of the video, I work in sort of like six days of the week at the moment. I haven't really got as much time as you can see by the lack of videos to put into Age of Sigma. But from my point of view, there's almost, there's been too much stuff. Every time I, I hear like, oh, you know, like, a, I don't know. Um, oh, the Deep King got a new book came out. I was like, yeah, well, Skaven's came out like, since then and Silver Death and uh, Nighthorn. So for me, I, I'm happy for it not to ramp up any more speed. And I think we've just had a general's handbook. There's going to be a bit of a cool down after that. You can definitely tell that they're hyping up 30K at the moment because it is their, it's a huge, um, I don't want to call it a box game, but a specialist game they've just launched. So I feel like the fact they're still releasing Battle Tomes for Age of Sigma while struggling that, to be fair to Games Workshop, so I definitely criticise them if I got the opportunity. I think 
from what I can see, it's I'm quite happy at the pace. And I, I don't think if they are put on the back burner, they have announced that basically they're bringing out two general handbooks a year already. And there was what did you mention, Alex? The uh, the the sheet that balances everything. Yeah, yeah, like the the quarterly uh, like balance sheet. But yeah, we know we're getting eleven battle tomes this year. That's wild. Like we're probably getting twelve because I find it hard to believe that they'll release Slave Startness um, as a standalone set. Like they'll probably still do a FOMO box. There's, there's a lot 12, of stuff coming for them. Twelve well. battle tomes in a year. Like that's not the back burner. Like AOS is yeah the best state it's ever been. But yeah, they've got other games like thirty k is their big summer release. Like that's where they're gonna you know that's where their yearly profits are gonna make that they have to make money. Like last year it was us. Um, next year it'll be forty k. Like yeah, it's just yeah it's gonna come in. Peaks and then and it might be us after that. Well, it, yeah, at exactly. the end of the day, um, and there's there's more than enough of things um, coming out. And then also all the specialist games again, like I think Warcry has just had another box come out with another big book, things like that. So I, I think to be honest with you, um, they're, they're doing quite a good job at the moment. And like from someone who can't put all their time in it now, I think if they were to do more for me, it would be quite overwhelming, uh, especially trying to cover content and all that sort of thing. It's like, I always completely don't know what I'm talking about. Um, so, but it's a good point, Cole. It's um, better for bringing that up. And then Russell saying, uh been the mighty and cunning and lurkers below are they the battle plans that we're talking yeah. about um so that's fair yeah because i was saying some of them would just completely make it unfair for some armies and i think if that's just having a conversation now in the chat and us that's our point of view that they should maybe not take those to tournaments then tos are also having that same conversation with themselves i would imagine um so you probably won't see those ones there's more than enough battle plans to pick not including them isn't there so yeah. it's not like you have to take them um and then russ also saying uh that's the uh, kill get events on the auto win one yep that's fine um and then uh, so cody saying just bought uh into fleshy courts with zero knowledge of the game but i'm looking forward to learning and crushing well i'm very happy that you've got yourself into the game mate i have done a very long series on fleshy courts but it's like an addition old but you can still watch it a lot of the war scrolls and stuff are still the same so check that out absolutely love flesh of courts are they doing all right at the moment alex would you say flesh of courts yeah they're all right struggling? yeah i mean they're, they're still they're definitely one of the lower uh performing armies um but like again they got that like, they've got a few little buffs um between a white dwarf update and um uh the data sheet um so they're, they're in an okay space but yeah definitely not one of the strongest armies that's fine and like i say if you can take that cody and you can learn it uh the game with them and then you go to a point where you know maybe you're losing your first few games but then you get to the point where you start winning them uh even makes more you know achievement for yourself or winning it if it's an army that's not one of the strongest uh and then russell again is saying 100 uh jump in the aeros competitive scene uh it's generally full of amazing people and you will have a blast absolutely right russell and that's what we're talking about just getting straight into a tournament and like Honestly, playing like five games um, over two days is really good for getting those reps in at that high level as well. Because like you say, I think it's is it called the Swiss system where mm. you eventually just fight people the same level as you. Um, yep. And by going through that method, if you're not having a particularly great time in terms of your successfulness at a tournament, um, as the tournament goes on, you're going to have more of a better time because you'll fight people who are closer to your skill level, essentially. Yep. Um and then uh, Russell saying, stop going to the gym and go to the tournaments two minutes away from your house. Essentially, Russell's someone I know who lives in Kent, and um, so I'm from Kent as well, and he helps organise tournaments in here. And I've never been to one of his, but essentially the reason for that is because I used to just exclusively work weekends, and now I work six days a week. It's only one day at the weekend generally, so I should be more able to come to your tournaments, Russell, don't you worry. Um, and then... Uh, Football and Games saying, hi, hi, mate. Hope you're doing well. Thank you very much for joining us. We're coming to the end of this video, but you're more than welcome to re-watch it. And if you've got any questions, put in the comments down below, and I'll happily answer them best I can. And Guel was saying, well, things are picking up somewhat with Warcry and the new books for AOS, but I do feel slowing things down sometimes isn't a bad thing. And I think that's basically what we talked about as well in terms of their release schedule. And then he's also saying, I mean, last year it was just release after release. It was almost impossible to keep up with everything. I, I agree. I think, um, I know I've got you on quite a few of the videos as well, Alex, but I think there was a point where like three months I was making a video every day and it still wasn't covering. Like you, you could just talk about it for hours and it was just, it was so easy to miss things as well. I think 
this is and also even just one book coming out like you said a month for example that's still a lot of content or a lot of knowledge that can change the game and impact the game um but if you look at for example sylvaneth weren't particularly the best army were they before no. that bastion came out and that bastion came out and it's made them maybe not the absolute best army but you know still right up there yeah yeah like just catapulted them so you can see and then how makes them the best army obviously that affects other armies and goes on and on and on and then i think um if they release too much stuff it doesn't always work out like this but sometimes it feels like uh you're getting less value for money with every purchase because something new is just coming out around the corner so i i'm i'm more than happy with what they're releasing at the moment essentially um and then extra team is saying that keep up what you do and really appreciate the work you put up into this thank you very much mate that's really really nice to see i am like trying to do more videos now i think i said in my last video i'll try and maybe do like one a week so it might just be one every few weeks or something like that but even it's it's still something to come out to you guys because i don't want to um i want to make content that you guys will hopefully find helpful and the amount of people who have been messaging and the chat today it seems like a lot of people are quite happy for this video because i want to make videos that you guys want and not just i could make a video on every of the new battle times coming out that we mentioned and give you my um basically uh bollocks thoughts and what i think about everything because i don't actually know just to make content so i don't want to do that so i want to make content that you guys enjoy and with that guys i'm going to thank you all very much for watching this if you've got any more questions put them in the comments down below if there's anything that you think that we didn't cover in this video that you'd like an answer to i'll be more than happy to try and help you out and uh, i want to say alex thank you very much for joining me in this video it's a pleasure to have you on it's a pleasure to chat to you again um and we'll try and get a game over TTS, shall we, before this tournament? For sure. It'll be very great and fantastic. Right, guys, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you're all doing well. Remember to keep safe and everything like that. And if really enjoy your games, just get out there, start playing competitively, and um, have an absolute blast. You won't regret it. Remember until next time that Nagash is all, and all is one in Nagash. See you later. <laughs>